What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome to Not Your Status Quo. Today, we are having our Book of Boba Fett Theory Palooza. And thanks to our wonderful sponsor, Sprite, we are filming here in the Sprite Commons. Thanks, Sprite. If he had spoken such insolence to Java, he'd have fed you to his menagerie. To get started, we have to jump into the comics for a minute, if that's okay with you fine gentlemen. Let's do comics. it! Comics? <laughs> but I hate comic books! <laughs> They're for kids! <laughs> you know we got a giveaway involving a comic book, involving this show, right? We literally have a rack of comic books. <laughs> <laughs> but, speaking of our giveaway, probably still going on if you haven't gotten in, enter now. But during the War of the Bounty Hunters... And this is a spoiler warning for those of you who have not read it. Crimson Dawn is back. And you might remember Kira from Solo, A Star Wars Story, which we all enjoyed. Wasn't the most popular Star Wars movie in the thing. But if you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. Because I think all of this is coming back. Basically, during War of the Bounty Hunters, the Crimson Dawn are back. They actually steal the carbonite Han Solo from Boba Fett when he stops on Narshada. And it goes from there. I won't ruin everything for you, but basically they're back. And this happened right before Return of the Jedi. So we know we are now five years after Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? I think, from what we've seen in the trailers with Boba Fett saying, you know, trying to put all these, if we cooperate, we'll make millions. I think he's saying that not because of anything Jabba ever did, but they need to band together to slow Crimson Dawn. Mm. Because Crimson Dawn, when Maul put them together... They I were was unstoppable. just about to ask, are you implying that we may see Maul or some of his associates come back? We know that Maul is dead by this point. Maybe so, in a flashback. Uh, sorry, spoilers, I guess, if you didn't <laughs> If you watch haven't seen Star Wars any Rebels. Of Rebels. <laughs> um, if, you but, want, uh, if you want to see Maul, that's a different show. It might, you know, he might show up on the We Want show, for all we know. He might, but he's dead for this. But I, mm -hmm. I do think she's going to have some powerful allies. Okay. And we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm not saying that we are going to see Amelia Clark as Kira in the first episode. You know, we know there's seven episodes for the Book of Boba Fett. It was originally four. They've kind of stretched it out. We're now getting seven, which I hope is because there's so much quality to film that yep. they needed seven. Yep. But I do think we will see Kira in this, but I don't think we'll see her till the end. She will be like almost the Luke reveal at the end of Mandalorian Season 2. Things are going to go wrong. Boba Fett and his allies are going to win and start pushing Crimson Dawn back and maybe stealing back some of their power. And that's when Kira, at the end, is going to step in and be like, looks like I'll have to do this myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, didn't we say, and uh, I, I could be misremembering, but didn't we say back when we were uh, reviewing The Mandalorian that they basically give them, like, look, take however many episodes you need to, to tell this story? I, I assume the same thing must be happening at this point, too. They're like... Look, if you need more than four in order to tell this good, coherent story, you got it. Well, and it's and it's and it's the you know the dynamic duel. It's Fav Favreau and Filoni. Yep. You know, so you know it's not a garbage story, and there's not no. gonna be filler. And know? Robert Rodriguez has even said what Favreau <clears throat> has written for this is just amazing, and he has so much good stuff. Oh, to Robert work with. Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah. What does he need a, a, to blow up another spaceship? I'm not over it yet. <laughs> He's like the, the outer space western Boba Fett type of director. Yeah. Well, yeah, his episode he directed for Mandalorian yeah. was just absolutely amazing. We finally saw that mm -hmm. Boba Fett we were all wishing to see yeah. from when we were, you know, seven years old. But and you may be saying, come on, they've there's been no mention of Crimson Dawn, there's been no mention of Kira, there's been nothing. But right now in the comics, again, not only did we have War of the Bounty Hunter, which ended, mm -hmm. but it's leading into two new series. With Crimson Dawn, Crimson Rain, and then the Hidden Empire. So the comics are focusing heavily on Crimson Dawn, and I don't think it's just out of circumstance or chance. I think it's going to be tying into this quite closely. And I also, when I heard that title, Hidden Empire, who do we know who is pushed out to the outer rim, to the outer reaches, wherever in the empire, and might be putting together an army? I think it's Din Djarin. I would say Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And we had hints of him in the Jedi episode of The That's Mandalorian, right. where Ahsoka is still looking for, for him. Ezra. We know. Yeah. I think that is hinting at 
Thrawn coming back into the core planets again with an mm-hmm. army. And I, the reason I think this is happening is because we've heard that all of these Star Wars shows on Disney Plus are going to connect and have like a big overall thing. Its own little universe. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is going to not only be Crimson Rain in power and Boba Fett and his group kind of, but it's going to be Thrawn coming back too. And whether what Thrawn brings back leads into what becomes the First Order or not, but I think we're going to have these three groups battling for power, and it's going to bring in, and you're going to say, well, Keith, how does that bring in Ahsoka? <laughs> Why does Ahsoka need to be involved? Keith, how does that bring in Ahsoka? Hey, oh. Keith, <laughs> whatever you said about Ahsoka. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, gentlemen. All right. Who has been with Thrawn since the end of Rebels? Ezra. Ezra Obi Wan. Uh, Ezra. He had had. <laughs> he has had hints of kind of going down a dark path throughout the Rebels. And if him and Thrawn had to work together to survive, <clears throat> I think Thrawn is smart enough to start steering him closer and closer to the dark side. I think when they come back and they find Thrawn, he is going to have a Sith working for him, and I think that's going to be Ezra Bridger. Mm. And I think that's why Ahsoka is going to get involved. And Bo Katan and Sabine Wren, and that's how we're going to get all these characters together. You have, you know, Boba Fett and his crime group wanting to stop Thrawn and the Empire coming back because they probably do a lot better under the New Republic regime. Mm-hmm. Crimson Dawn the same way. So I think it's going to lead into this one big massive powwow where Thrawn's army, Crimson Dawn, and Boba Fett and the Crime Syndicate, and then we're going to have Ahsoka and those guys, and yeah. obviously. Keep in mind what Keith's saying here isn't gonna probably not gonna happen over the seven show arc. Correct. <laughs> this sounds more like a, a more <clears throat> overall Star Wars universe, right? Type yeah. Of thing. I think we're going to be hinted at it here, but it is going to play out over the Ahsoka show, you know, Mandalorian season three, which I do think is him going to be trying to help take back Mandalore, and that may be a focal point of what Thrawn wants when he comes back with his army. So, you know, there's a lot going on. But I think enough has been hinted at that we can guess that that is what's going on. We've had the name drop for Thrawn. We know they're looking for Ezra mm-hmm. because of the end of, you know, Star Wars Rebels. And we know what Boba Fett's doing because we saw the trailers of him putting them together. Mm-hmm. And I do think that line of his where he says, Jabba ruled with fear. I intend to rule with respect. It's hinting at how the Crimson Dawn run ever since Maul was really, it's, you know, brought it all together that could very well be you know in all honesty i i i really could buy the vast majority of these theories no need to reel them in no not at all and here's why this goes back to what we've been saying about uh you know uh john favreau and uh dave filoni they are like kids with their toys and they will pick out some of the best stuff from the expanded universe and they'll say guess what fucking canon now i am glad you said that because that gets me to my next point if you guys have all been watching all the commercials and stuff, in the latest TV spot, we see a new character kind of on a speeder bike roll up and look at us. And I think I know who that is. And fans of Star Wars video games may remember Arden Lynn. She is a dark Jedi and master of terracotta, a fighting style or steel hand in basic. Mm-hmm. And she was deadly and mythical martial art discipline renowned throughout the galaxy. And I, guess, I think that because she has a metal arm. We'll be showing the picture here, hopefully. But the metal <laughs> arm for her left arm, and that is exactly what Arden Lynn is. And we know that Favreau and Filoni like to bring in these characters from video games, from books that are no longer canon, and make them canon. And I really think it is going to be Arden Lynn. And I think she is going to be one of two things. She is either going to be an enforcer for the Crimson Dawn, because mm-hmm. obviously they're going to have enough money to really pay a dark jedi enough to really make it worth their while and of course if she has a dark jedi she could be who plays out throughout the seven episodes of the book of boba fett and then once she fails to really reel in the you know boba fett and (laughs) not not reeling him in like that you know once she kind of fails and you know fennec shand and boba fett are still in the show i think she's going to go back and it's going to be a lot like solo she's going to report to kira and then that's going to lead in to Amelia Clark being able to come back as Kira on future Disney Plus shows running the Crimson Dawn. Well, I think you all need to get in the comments and let us know. <laughs> what do you think? Is uh, Keith on to something? Does he, uh, is, is he correct about uh, um, 
Have we ever been wrong? What's her name? Karen? Arden, no, Arden, Arden Lynn. Arden Lynn. Is he correct about Arden Lynn? Is she going to show up straight out of the video games onto the big screen? The little screen? Disney Plus screen? Let us know. <laughs> Get in the comments. Yeah. You know, and then last year, what was that, um, the guy that you thought was going to show up from the video game? I forget his name. Mephisto. But it, <laughs> it turned out to be Luke Skywalker, but you thought he was... Oh, Cal Kestis. Cal oh, Kestis. Cal yeah. Kestis. So that, that's what makes me kind of skeptical about it, because, um, you know, I was kind of... I didn't know who he was, and I still didn't know who um, Arden was. You know, if she's got the characteristics she is. But that that's the only thing that makes me skeptical, is that he, you know, they didn't bring in the guy last year. The only difference here is we've seen a picture of her, and she's very similar to the character from that video game. But you're right, my, my Cal Kestis theory, which was yeah, awesome, by the way. It was. Go back and watch it. I mean, I honestly did not think that they were going to be able to have Luke Skywalker on that show. No. Yeah. So the fact that they made us all, you know, weep as grown men when yeah. <laughs> we saw that X-Wing <laughs> flying in was great. What are you talking about? I just had allergies that day. <laughs> yeah. I was chopping onions at 5 in the morning. <laughs> Allergies on the day like before Christmas. Yeah. 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 I'm getting to you. Huh? <laughs> well, I, and we were saying I wanted to make make a point about the you were saying that about Favreau. Yeah. All of his connections in the MCU have just been cut. You know, Tony's gone. Um, Pepper's not coming back. And then the girl that he was dating, Aunt May, she's gone too. I mean, he's got Dummy. That's about it. <laughs> and he, who? Just him and Dummy, the robot. <laughs> and he has no idea who Peter is anymore. No. So. But, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, not, shit. Like, nobody's seen that yet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so he has plenty of time to dedicate to Star Wars, is what I was going to say. And if you haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, we apologize for what Whoops. you just heard. <laughs> Remember, this is Dave. <laughs> but please, add us at Twitter, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time on Not Your Status Quo.